Hello, welcome back to this Mercedes Sprinter camper conversion. In this episode, we're going to be installing this rear view camera. You would have seen me the other day reverse the van into the garden like a professional. I'm used to driving a van and I'm used to reversing vehicles on the mirrors, but it would be really handy to see out the back to see exactly how close you were to things. So we're going to get a camera fitted to the back of the Sprinter. These cameras would normally replace the high level brake light. My Sprinter, for some reason, doesn't have a high level brake light. So we're going to have to adapt this kit very slightly to make it work. I've just wrapped the camera just to protect it a little bit and just put the plug in a bag as well to keep any dust and debris out of it. And then with this multi-tool with a little cutting disc on there, I'm just going to see if I can remove these plastic pieces on the back of the light. So I've cut all of these plastic pieces off the back which would have protruded into the van so now this reflector will fit completely flush and I don't need to cut any holes in the van other than the two screw fixing holes and a hole in the centre to just pop the cable through and then I can put a little bit of Sikaflex on those holes just to make sure that they're watertight. What I do want to do though now because this is not going to be a working brake light anymore. So what I want to do is I want to paint the rest of this black because obviously what I want to avoid is getting pulled over by the police. If my top brake light appears not to be working, I could get pulled over for that. So if I spray all of this black, it won't look like a brake light anymore. It will just look like a rear view camera. So I'm just going to rough this up with some sandpaper because it's very shiny this surface just to give a bit of a key for the paint to stick to and then we're going to spray it. Just dull down that nice shiny finish with a bit of sandpaper. That'll give something for the paint to stick to. Same as when we've done any kind of spraying in the past. You want to keep an even distance from the piece. You always want to spray in a smooth, continuous direction. Don't stop too long in one spot and then that will avoid any build up and drips. Do some light coats, let that dry and then we'll come back and give it another coat. Never be tempted to put too much on in the first instance because that's when you'll start getting runs. I'm just giving that a light sanding and then apply the second coat of that black paint. This is actually a matte finish. It looks gloss because it's wet at the moment but that will dry to a matte finish. Okay, so the components that make up the camera end of this rig, obviously the rear view camera, that's connected to this short lead which then has got a power socket, 12 volt, and the AV lead, the video lead. You've got the power lead here with the 12 volt plug, and then this is just labeled up 12 volt and ground, and it's got a little inline fuse carrier with a little blade fuse holder. And then we've got a couple of AV extension cables so the only cable running from front to back will be the video cable and there's enough here obviously to run right the way through to the cab and then this is the screen part seven inch color screen which you would clamp over your rear view mirror both the display and the camera need a 12 volt power supply so they both got a red and a black cable. So at the front of the van and at the rear of the van, I'll need to pick up a 12 volt DC supply. 
So what I've got is I've just wired both the reds and both the blacks to my bench supply just to power them up. And then in addition to that, there's this green wire. And this is the switched live. And then what you'd do is you'd find your reversing light so that when you put the vehicle into reverse, it normally has a white light that comes on at the back of the van. So if you find that cable where it comes from the front of the van to the back, splice into it and then connect this green cable to that. And then as soon as that lamp comes on, it will give a 12 volt supply voltage. And you'll see just I can touch this on this 12 volt clip here. And you'll see instantly the camera comes on. If I hold that on there. We can move the camera and obviously you can see that color display just to prove that's working and then as soon as you take it out of reverse that lamp will go off and the camera goes off this camera kit also comes with a little remote control They're kind enough to give you a free battery as well so as well as being able to turn this camera on on the screen we should be able to yeah turn it on and off with the remote and if we had different video feeds we could obviously select from one camera to another and if there was an audio feed coming in here I could also turn the volume up and down I think with this menu button yeah I can alter the brightness the contrast saturation, tint and language mode from widescreen and I can rotate which I imagine means to flip the signal 180 degrees or flip the video so it's got some great features on there as well that'll come in handy this is the power and video lead that attaches to the camera this is the power supply what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of heat shrink over this plug and socket. And what that will do is when it's in the van, that will help to make sure that this doesn't come apart. And it will also prevent any moisture and whatever getting into that connection. I've got my little heat gun, which is about 350 degrees centigrade. There we go, I'll let that cool down a bit, but that's that'll never come apart now. So we've got to drill a few holes here to make way for the cables and the uh, screw fixings. Mark the holes for the screws and for the cable, just going to get them drilled. Holes drilled for the cable and the screws. I just used a bit of this white mastic sealing strip, which is purposely designed for caravans and motorhomes, just to act as like a gasket between the van and the little bracket. This will make sure that no water gets in behind that. This stuff is really, really sticky. Just taken a couple of screws, poked them into some paper and then sprayed them black. Now that's got the camera fitted. Those black screws look nice. All we've got to do now is just trim off that mastic strip. There we go, that's the mastic all trimmed. That looks really good. The video screen part of this camera system comes with these spring mounted clips on the back and the idea is that you clip it onto your rear view mirror. I didn't have a rear view mirror in this Sprinter when I got it but I managed to get this second hand one off of eBay for £20 so I'm going to clip it to that. That seems pretty secure on that mirror so all I need to do is route this video cable up behind the headliner here there is a little gap I can just get my finger in so I can put the cable up there and then connect it above the headliner. I've just removed this light here so I can get access into the back here to pull the cables in. I need a 12 volt supply here for the camera and if I turn this light on there's obviously a permanent 12 volt feed here. I haven't got the ignition key in or the ignition on so I'm guessing that this red wire here is a permanent live. So I'll probably be able to use that to put a live onto the camera. And a little bit further along here, conveniently there's a ground there bolted to the chassis. So that'll give me a, effectively my negative. 
This is the wiring loom that goes from the front of the sprinter to the back. And in amongst these cables, there's a red cable which will be a permanent 12 volt supply. And there'll also be a white and red cable in there, which is the one that brings on the reversing light. So I'm just going to open up this bunch of cables. I'm going to pair off a little bit of the insulation and then I'm just going to test that I've got the right cable. All I've done on that white and red cable is just stripped a little bit of insulation back so I can see the cable. I'll get a temporary connection onto it with a little crocodile clip just so I can test the system. And once I've verified that I'm on the right cable, then obviously I can make a permanent soldered connection with some heat shrink. You have to appreciate this is only temporary. I've got the red giving me a power supply and the green is the switched power, which is connected to the reversing light wire. All right, so I hope you can see this. Um, if I turn it on manually, I've got power there. Obviously it will come up, it's getting no video signal. So let's just turn it off. So now if I put the van in reverse, there we go. I'm getting a video signal. You'll see I've put the uh, closed peg bag on the washing line just as a proof of a uh, live feed. <laughs> Take it out of reverse, lose the signal. Put it back in reverse, camera comes on. That's a lovely little colour picture there as well. Brilliant, I'll be able to see exactly what I'm reversing into. That reversing camera works really well and that'll be a great addition to this sprinter conversion. The kit itself cost about £130, I bought it off eBay. I'll stick a link in the description below if you want to purchase your own. Don't forget on my main page there are links to my Facebook page and also links to my 3D warehouse. It was really helpful of you guys to jump in and find me those wiring diagrams and I really appreciate the time you took to do that. Don't forget you can always leave me a comment below, look forward to reading those and I'll come back to you as quick as I can. Thanks very much for watching, hope you join me on the next episode. Cheers!